happy Saturday, y'all. Happy Saturday. Um, so today we go jump right into the message today. Go um, pray and go right in. Father God, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to decrease Shanika and your Holy Spirit increases none of me, Father God, and all of you, Jesus. I also ask, Father God, that you would meet every need according to your will of anyone who is hearing this message. And by faith, I consider it done. And I'll always be ever careful to give you all the praise, to give you all the glory, because it belongs, Jesus, to only you. In these things, these things, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So today, I want to share a a a dream I had back on May 24th to be exact. Um, so I have a message today based on that dream that I believe the uh, Lord would have me share today. So back on May 24th, I had a dream. Um, I went to a friend's house and when I got to her house, she was laying in a bed and based on the dream, she wasn't feeling well. She wasn't doing well. She was seemed as if she was bedridden. And um, as I got closer to the bed, I realized that she had some books in her bed. But the books weren't just laying on the bed. They were actually kind of hidden. They were in a, um, there was a swoop or a ditch in the bed. There was a ditch in the bed and down in the crevices of this ditch were some books. Um, so I started to look and I noticed that many of the books, they were self-help books, how-tos and da da da, a lot of self-help books. But then I noticed a very small book and that book was the Holy Bible. So many large books and then there was a small book in this ditch in the bed. And um, so... For today's message, let's start with, so that was the dream. Um, from that dream, I was able, Jesus showed me uh, where we are today, um, wh where um, the spirit of divination is on the rise like never before, where a lot of um, e Christians, um, the world and in Christians included are being led by things that are not of God. A lot of, you know, um, dabbling into things like gems and stones and um, horoscopes. And I'll, I'll tell you, when it comes to horoscopes, I'll go ahead and share what he showed me just today. Um, you know, by according to the world's standard, I am a Virgo born on September 14th. According to the world, I am a Virgo. Um, but if we look at what that means, a lot of the, um, you know, definition or how, how being a Virgo is defined, sometimes that can be as a person who is, um, who worries a lot, um, a person who is fussy, a person who is stubborn, a person who um, has to do everything perfectly. That is the world's definition of who a Virgo is. I cannot stand in agreement with the world's definition of who I am. My identity is found in Jesus Christ. And he has told us, he has warned us to condemn, to deny, to cast down everything that exalts itself against his truth. That isn't what Jesus says about me. So I cannot stand in agreement with what the world calls me. I hope, I hope that is making sense to you. And uh, so, but let's jump into, let's jump into the word for today, which is coming from 2 Timothy, uh, third chapter, verse one through seven. And it reads, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, pride, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, 
without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with these people. That is what the Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying, have nothing to do with people who are like this. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. In other words, proclaiming to be a Christian, but not living a, in a, a, a life of obedience, not living according to the way Jesus has called, called us to live. That is denying the power thereof because Jesus's power, it transforms lives. So we, we can't walk around representing him and claiming his identity and not living the way he has called us to live. It is an insult to him. It is offensive to him and it, it, it depreciates the truth of who he is and what he's able to do in our lives. And back to the, I want to get to where I'm going here without getting sidetracked. Verse six, that was verse five, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. Verse six. They are the kind who they are the kind who want warm worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. The message Bible describes it this way. Here it says they are loaded down with sin and swayed by all types of uh, desires. The message Bible says they are swayed by every religion, every whatever is a uh, a fad at the time and 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 considered um, to be truth by the word, whatever the fad is at the time. They're swayed by different ideologies and different beliefs. And here we are, and this goes back to the dream, the books, the books, all of these different books, and um, the miniature Bible. Verse 7 says, always learning, always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Always learning. We have information like never before. Social media. We have influencers right and left. We have a prophet, a prophetess around every corner. And these days we have itching ears. We're all looking for something spiritual. We're all looking for a word. We're all, we can idolize uh, prophets. And, and, and you know, we, we can idolize them, always looking for um, a sign answers in books, sometimes in people. Um, when the truth is, the truth is his truth, a full understanding coming into the knowledge of who he is, is a personal walk. It's a walk with Jesus through His word. This is the truth through his word. Not that there's anything wrong with um, learning and reading. Um, but again, I want to go to our um, second scripture today, um, which is 2 Corinthians 10 through 5, which says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive to obey God that is 2 Corinthians 10 5 we can only do this Jesus is calling us calling us to destroy 
any information, anything, any ideology, any belief, any religion, any any um, idol worship, any um, anything that goes against his truth. And so we have to go back to his word um, so that we can always stand on his truth and not be swayed, not be swayed in a time when we know the Antichrist spirit is always in the world. And we know that it will deceive the most intelligent people. The, he's calling us back to a place where we need to be able to discern a spirit. We need to be able to know we need to be able to know and identify truth, the truth from what is false. And he has made that very, very clear to us. Even here, the Apostle Paul is pointing out unforgiveness, slanderous, uh, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, conceited, lovers of pleasure, all of these things. And we know that he has told us that we need to test the spirit by the spirit. How do we do that? We look at the fruit. We look at fruit. We look for love. We look for peace. We look for patience. We look for kindness. We look for fruit. We look for fruit. And um, so we sharpen our discernment. We sharp, sharpen our knowledge of truth by remaining in his word by remaining in his word remaining in his in his word and i want to um share something else um jesus also reminded me of um the scripture that says, I will say to them plainly, depart from me, depart from me. Um, I never knew you, depart from me. And um, he was pointing out that, you know, many